Welcome to Dynamics Ignite from Technology Management. In this video we are going to be looking at fixed assets. Microsoft Dynamics NAV 2013 provides a fully integrated fixed asset management functionality which helps a company manage its assets effectively and efficiently. In this video I will show how to create a fixed asset, how to post an acquisition cost via a journal, how to calculate and depreciate a fixed asset and finally how to dispose of a fixed asset. I am logged on to Microsoft Dynamics NAV 2013 as an accounting manager. A typical life cycle of a fixed asset in NAV begins with the creation of a fixed asset card to register the fixed asset in the program and ends with the disposal of the fixed asset. Fixed assets must have one or more depreciation books to record depreciation. You can use the default depreciation book or create your own. We will use the existing depreciation book called Company for our new fixed asset. In this scenario, the ID department have purchased a new computer. We need to create a fixed asset record in NAV, which will be depreciated by the same amount over a three-year period. I'm logged on to NAV 2013 as an accounting manager, and I'm going to create a new fixed asset. On the new fixed asset card, I enter the description. It's a HP desktop PC, and also the serial number. I fill in the responsible employee. This may be the person that uses the computer or the department head. On the lines, I have entered the depreciation book of company. You can set up unlimited number of depreciation books for a fixed asset, and for each book you can specify the individual depreciation terms. For example, you can specify that a fixed asset should be depreciated over three years in one book and over five years in another book. I have entered the fixed asset posting group of IT. The fixed asset posting group determines the GL accounts to use for posting acquisition costs, depreciation and disposal costs. I have chosen the depreciation method straight line. There are several options for depreciation method, including one where you can define your own percentage depreciation for each period, whether that be the month, quarter, year or accounting period. We will use straight line method for our fixed asset, which will depreciate by the same amount each year. I have entered the depreciation start date and end date, which gives me a depreciation years of three. On the posting tab, I will use the fixed asset class of tangible, fixed asset subclass of machinery, and the fixed asset location of sales. We can now return to the fixed asset list. We now need to set up the acquisition cost, and we will use a fixed asset journal to do this. However, it is possible to use a purchase invoice instead if we wanted to. Create a new journal. I have completed the journal line. It has a posting date of the 23rd of January. The document number will follow through the system. It's for the account type fixed asset and for the fixed asset that we have just created. And it's an acquisition cost and the purchase price was £695. This includes VAT and this is the balancing account. We can now post this journal. If we now return to our fixed asset card, we can see that the book value has been entered. This is the £697 less VAT. If we click on the book value, we can see the fixed asset ledger entries that make up this value. In this case, it is the acquisition cost. From here, we can navigate and we can see the entries. This is the original purchase price split in to the cost and the VAT. We'll now calculate depreciation. At intervals in line with your company policy, you will need to depreciate assets. We will now do this for the fixed asset we have created. We need to calculate and post depreciation for our fixed asset for the first year. However, we could do this monthly, quarterly if we wanted. So we need to simulate that we have traveled through time to the end of 2014. From our fixed asset card, we calculate depreciation. I'm calculating depreciation based on the company depreciation book. I've entered the fixed asset posting date and the posting date and document number, and also the posting description. In this example, I've filtered just to the fixed asset that we have created. However, you can calculate depreciation for all fixed assets. When I click on OK, NAV will calculate depreciation and create a fixed asset general journal entry for me to check and post. If I open up the fixed asset general journal, 
I can see it's created two lines for me. One line is for the depreciation and the other line is for the balancing account, which is the depreciation equipment account. The value of the depreciation has been calculated by the system as £198. This is a third of the asset acquisition cost and we chose a depreciation of straight line over three years when we set up our asset. Once the journal has been checked, we can then post. If we now look at our fixed asset, we can see that the book value has changed. We can now see that the book value is £395.19. If we drill down, we can see there's two entries, the acquisition cost and the depreciation for 2014. To summarise this video, we have seen how Microsoft Dynamics NAV 2013 provides a fully integrated fixed asset management function, which helps a company manage its assets effectively and efficiently. We created a fixed asset, recorded the acquisition costs and calculated depreciation. NAV is a versatile solution for managing your fixed assets and has many other functions including maintenance records, insurance and disposal costs.